Let me at him! Well, there it is. Here we have a one versus a one versus well, between Fire Lord 0.1 and Anubis. Emphasis on noob. So, blue human, looking like he's going to be going for a fast creep with his archmage, militia, and maybe a footman if he wants against the goblin laboratory. Meanwhile, the slow undead will take a while to react. However, if the altar is created next, which it should be, it will release the death knight in about a minute, I would say. And that death knight, if he is taking the right path, will venture over this way to where Fire Lord is. And you know what he's going to do? If he knows how human play on Twisted Manos, is he's going to come straight here. And he's going to death coil some weak peasants slash militia after they've been creeping. And he's going to get a few kills. And then he's going to raise those skeletons from the peasants' corpses. And then do some damage, get some experience, have a good time. The best the Archmage can hope for it is probably something like a Sobe Mask or something like that. If he had Sobe Mask, that would be pretty awesome, because that would really carry him far. This is good build. This is the correct build, basically. Mostly. Two peasants finishing up the barracks. Footman on his way. Meanwhile, we can see Anubis is holding out for the Death Knight and the Fiend, once the cigarette has finished. So this is the Fiend build, two ghouls, and then straight into Fiends and Death Knight once that cigarette has finished. And the Tome of Relics, Tomb rather, Tomb, will be up by the time the Death Knight comes out, allowing the Death Knight to purchase himself one of them skeleton rods. Fire Lord getting, up, getting set up. This is a lot of militia here, seven. Normally six will do. But he wants to make sure he creeps this, and it's probably a good idea. Just check out and see how that Death Knight's getting along. You can see he's still got a while to come out, but there's still time for him to come out from that base, especially this is the closest position you could be in for harassing a human who is creeping the Goblin Laboratory spot. Yeah, this is going well so far. He's going to need to pull back that militia or make him attack one of his units, but never mind. He hasn't got another water elemental to fall back on to take the creeping or the aggro. Will he get picked off? Ooh, that was close. Death Knight should be coming out right about now. He's going to pick himself up the rod. He's going to get himself some skeletons, and then he's going to move off west, I would assume. And what was it? Ugh. Alera's Flute of Accuracy. Yes, if you're going rifles or griffins, it is advantageous. I believe it does work also for casters, although they will probably only get plus one damage, so not that great. Anubis does look like he's going for a fast expansion. So neither player's scouted, and uh, you can't always fault the undead for this, but it is obviously a risk to have your expansion facing as close as possible to your opponent. We've got eight peasants here for Fire Lord and more coming out, so we might assume that he's also investing into getting an expansion himself, perhaps, or he just wants to make sure he's got enough wood for later on. The Blight here helps out Anubis when it comes to healing up his fiends, because they will heal up four times as fast while standing on Blight. Just needs to buy a bit more time into another skeleton rod, and this creep camp is pretty easy. And uh, meanwhile, we can see that Fire Lord is going to be carrying on the creep, and he's got a lot more militia coming in here, so it'll allow him to take on this Rock Golem creep camp, which is approximately about, oh, I don't know, 15 levels worth of creeps. So that's going to be a lovely level 3 Archmage at the very, very least, and perhaps a Merc or two if he really wanted to. Oh, yes, he's going to pick up a Forest Troll Berserker. The militia can make their way back very shortly, and he's essentially taking almost no damage overall for his units. And he's going to pick himself up. What is it? Scroll of the Beast. Not the best item. It's a good 200 gold, though. Or if you are doing an all-in, then yes, it could be very effective. Especially early game. Well, I say that. Late game, really, if you've got a lot of units. But I mean, early game, if he, for example, was to go and attack Anubis at his expansion and use the Scroll of Raw, that's a lot of all-in power he has. You know, 
it's going to be very difficult to fight versus that. Arcane Vault being created a little bit earlier, but I suppose Firelord's still got a good chunk of healthy units, but he wants to try and distribute the damage as evenly as possible, if he can. That way he can make the most out of that scroll of regeneration. But he says, no, I don't want Footman. I want Rifleman instead, which is why he's probably getting the Blacksmith, I assume. Got two ziggurats over here, and they'll do. A necropolis position there could be pretty damn effective, making it quite tricky to get in there. The, the ziggurats should just about be able to get in range of the gold mine to help protect it versus footmen that might have defend. Anubis doesn't really want to spend any time sitting still if he can help it, but he is waiting for the rod of necromancy, and he is scouting currently with two of the skeletons. Just to check. But, unfortunately, they're both going in completely the wrong directions, and they're not going to give him much information apart from where the enemy isn't. Yep. Barracks is up. Riflemen are on their way. Clarity Potion. Very good for the Archmage because water elementals are just incredibly awesome. So, Firelord has a reasonably decent army. He's sitting at 31 food. Meanwhile, Anubis is 31 food too. Well, 34 food now for Firelord, but Firelord's ready and sitting at his expansion. These towers are up in time, basically, so that's not too bad. Firelord's going to have to be careful here. He has used the Scroll of Raw, so that's 200 gold gone, but it's going to give him the little bit of extra oomph he might need to try and take down this Spirit Tower. But he's definitely going to need to take out those Acolytes, because they're going to slow him down. Preferably we get everything on those if possible. Meanwhile, Anubis is going to be backing off here. Did he manage to pick up the items? He did creep this off, so he's got himself a Lion Horn of Stormwind, which isn't particularly good whatsoever. So that's pretty bad. But the tower's are almost going down, but Anubis is here to reiterate his position on the situation, and he's not happy, and he might want to get himself one of those... Yeah, he has. He's got himself Skeleton Warriors. Down goes Firelord's Berserker. This is essentially a suicide attack now for Firelord. He can't really do too much here. Anubis has the strength. He has the position. He has Ghouls. He has Fiends. He has the Blight. This is no way a good position for Firelord. The best he can do is essentially do what he's probably doing at the moment, which is just damaging the Death Knight, and hopefully he doesn't lose his unit. Move the Water Mental out so the Archmage can escape. If Anubis is playing this even more riskily, he might lose that Death Knight. It's a shame the Archmage is in such a position that he can't handle that. If he sent the Water Elementals in the rest of the army, he could definitely take out that Death Knight, providing he micro correctly. Meanwhile, he is getting himself an Arcane Sanctum. Anubis is still at Tier 1 due to the expansion. He needs to smooth these units in. He is aware of the Death Knight's position. Now, he does have a position to take out some of the Fiends, potentially, because the Death Knight isn't there to support them, but I don't know. I'd like to go in there. But the Mountain King is a lovely second addition here. He's really going to pack a punch as long as he can follow alongside the army. You don't want to leave him too far behind. There we go. So if you get a Storm Bolt or two on that Let Death Knight, it's pretty much GG. He's right there. Get the Storm Bolt, and this could be a kill right now. It doesn't do much damage, but the stun is effective, and there's enough damage coming around for Fire Lord's units to make the TP go off for the Death Knight. And here's a couple of fiends just sort of slacking. Stormbolt will pretty much seal a kill here. At least one, maybe a second one of this fiend wants to hang around much longer, which he shouldn't do. Oh, down he goes. Okay, that's two fiends down. Currently Anubis does have this expansion, so he's going to have the benefit of lots of gold. But, but bear in mind that he took a couple of ghouls off to help himself defend. And they were very useful, but he's now suffering because he's doing the same again. He's taking all of his ghouls off just to help push back this assault, which I wouldn't do. I would try to risk it for a biscuit, keep the ghouls in base, because if you're in this situation where you're getting all that gold, it's kind of useless if you can't spend it, unless you can spend it on lots of potions instead, because he can't certainly use it for wood purposes in buildings, and he's going to want that. He's going to want the tier 2, and the ghouls need to be active, or at least he could pop over to the um, goblin laboratory if he was able to, but he's not going to be able to, because he still hasn't got the wood to afford it. So he's in a bit of a predicament here. These ghouls need to get on the wood, really. Because this isn't going to get much better for him. Although, he is in a position to hold this off, so he's going to have to sacrifice a lot of wood. So if he's doing so, he definitely <laughs> he can't even get the cigarettes to get more ghouls, because I was going to say, he get more ghouls. At least he can build more ghouls when he loses units, so that's something. But yeah, this is still a bit awkward because he hasn't got that wood, he just needs a little bit more wood and then he can do something with it. Meanwhile, the Death Knight has been back in, going off back and forth because he's not in a position to hold off against Storm Bolts, but Mountain King is still about 8 mana away 
So he's a little bit shy of another Storm Bolt, and there is enough threat on the Mountain King. Hmm. I think that was a little bit hyperactive, that teleport, but maybe he just wants to get back to base as fast as possible so that he can get the Scrolls of Regeneration ticking and Clarity Potions. And Arcane Sanctums, we want to see maybe a Sork or two take advantage of the fact that Anubis does not have any Tier 2 thus far, but I don't know whether Fire Lord knows that. But he can probably assume that that's the case because Anubis has been sticking with Tier 1 units and still hasn't seen a Lich yet. One, oh no, a bunch of peasants coming out here for a fast build of an expansion. This is a lot of gold, so Anubis has fended that off, and this is still going to be very advantageous for him, because whilst he wasn't able to use that wood earlier, because he didn't have any, he sure can now, so he's got all that gold that he can use, spare, essentially, and he can just hoard it up. Although this is a nasty army here, 48 food for Fire Lord, 40 food for Anubis, and this is a much more reasonable army. These are riflemen. They're slightly upgraded. And there's priests behind it. And double hero, of course. Level 4 Archmage. So he's going to be packing a level 2 Brilliance or at least. And he's got the Alarius accuracy. So that's an extra plus 2 damage for all the riflemen. So that's very nice. Oh, we've got Thunderclap going off there from the Mountain King. That is very effective against the massive ghouls. And it's just slowing them down. Doing damage at the same time. Look at that. Lovely. Now that's where Thunderclap is absolutely awesome. So Stormbolt and Thunderclap are very optional, uh, decent options for a human player to take. You don't have to get Bash, although Bash is incredibly good and Stormbolt is also incredibly good. But you can either go whatever way you wish. And Anubis is really in a lot of trouble here because he just hasn't got the power. At least he's got some towers up. He really, really needs to keep those towers up. Keep the ghouls in the wood for the team time being because he's never going to get that wood up. The best he should do, really, is try to get 100 wood, get the Shredder from the Goblin Laboratory, and then get the Shredder concentrating on the wood and use the Ghouls as his army. But he's going to be soaking up for his resources here, trying to keep these Spirit Towers alive. He needs another one coming up here, really. He has got an opportunity to pick up a couple of Riflemen here, at the very least, but he's still only got two Fiends versus an army of Water Elementals, a Rifleman, a Priest, and an Archmage, and a Mountain King. I don't favour Anubis here too much, but Undead are very good at holding out in defensive positions. But meantime, bear in mind that we can see that Fire Lord has his expansion up and running now. So even if this attack doesn't go fantastic for Fire Lord, he is still wasting resources from Anubis. And he's getting resources for himself. This is double hero still. Anubis must be tier 2, almost, not quite. And he's had to back off here, Fire Lord. Really what he should do, and he could do, is he can afford two sappers if he really wanted to. It would be quite an investment, but if he places them right, or at least one sapper, he could take out two cigarettes, and they're upgraded cigarettes, so one sapper would easily pay off if you managed to get one sapper on that. Easily. The pig sees all. He knows what's going on. But he doesn't say anything. A player's forces are under attack. Workshop being produced or created, built, you might call it. Refined gunpowder, and Anubis has reached his tier two. Slaughterhouse. In an ideal world, he's going to get himself that shredder. But he might just try to tech up again, which is what I would probably do as well. I'll get the shredder first, then tech up again. Because the oh, Lich with an Orb of Corruption is a force to be reckoned with, that's for sure. Undead Pair. Alaria's Flute as well for no Anubis, so that's very handy for the Fiends. Very, very good. Fire Lord needs to keep active here. Almost level 5 with the Archmage. It's going to get to the point where... He's going to need to do something more active. And like I say, the Sappers would be a fantastic choice. If, of unit to use if you are going to be active with a level 5 Archmage because the Water Elementals could easily tank up, distract the towers and boom! Stormbolt! There's the level 5 and the Archmage and a nice gank here. Anubis is going to have to TP out here unless he wants to lose. No, he's going to use his Invulnerability pot early. I would have saved it for the Stormbolt personally, but that's okay. As long as he gets out of that situation, doesn't lose his hero, the game isn't quite over yet. <laughs> And you can see this gold is still there for Anubis, but it's going to wail away eventually, and he's got a decent defense here now. These towers are in a nice position, Necropolis blocking, and as well with the tomb, tomb of relics. 
Fire Lord stepping back towards the middle. I don't think he has a castle yet. So no tier 3 hero. Castle's almost produced, but not quite yet. So we're going to see some tanks. We've got Sorks coming out now. Tanks, tanks, tanks. That's what we want. Human player can quite comfortably do that. Ah, Shredder finally for one of the players, and it's for Fire Lord. Yes, you basically just go mass tanks. You get tier 3 versus undead. Go mass tanks and have fun. One Acolyte short on the gold mine, unfortunately for Anubis, so he's missing out on some potential gold there. He's currently mined 2,000 more gold than Fire Lord, but I don't know how much of that has been wasted on like items just to keep himself alive. Fire Lord needs to creep up that Mountain King. He's level 3 at the moment. Imagine a level 5 Mountain King. That'd just be GG, basically. Game over. Alongside tanks. There's not really much that Anubis could do. This is a good harass here from Anubis. He's going to get some experience here. He could bolster up his Death Knight if he's quick enough to level 5. Maybe not. Because the Mountain King's coming in here. Thunderclap reaching all of those units. Lich being very heavily focused. Coil was used offensively, I believe, against the Mountain King, which means that the Death Knight cannot save the Lich. And it does seem like Anubis is in a pickle, so he's going <laughs> to teleport out of that situation. Oh, cheeky Stormbolt. Yeah, that was a preemptive coil. A panic coil, I would call it. Two boneyards. This is essentially what Anubis loves to do. He really needs to get that acolyte on the gold mine. He is sitting at 51 foods as well, as mentioned. So if you wanna if you're gonna go up in food supply, then definitely do it. But don't sit at 51. <laughs> do not sit at 51. Kill a ghoul. Easily kill a ghoul. No problem there whatsoever. I know he is a bit shy for wood, but still do not sit at 51 food because that's 70% tax, especially on two expansions or two bases, two gold mines. Boom! Priest is down. Can't heal yourself that much, can you, mate? Mountain King is level 4. Archmage stepping back so the Mountain King soaks up the experience. And he is getting quite a lot of experience. These are quite powerful creeps. Two level 4s and a level 6. So the Mountain King should probably get close to halfway, I would imagine, after this. What we're going to get, one more or seal the deal towards halfway. There you go, close to halfway. You think you get a little bit more, but you don't. It gets really tight towards that point. But, having said that, all he does needs to do is creep another couple of camps, or pick off some undead units, and he'll get even more experience. He's got Orb of Darkness, something you don't normally see. Here comes the super nuke from the undead. Forces and Fire Lord back. So, fairly good engagement there for Anubis, but he's only going to have a limited amount of resources, so bear in mind that every time he does chuck off those nukes, he's not going to have so many of them to spare. I, think, I thought that tank was stuck there for a moment. Okay, Harass is coming in here for Anubis. First is Fire Lord at the expansion of Fire Lord. Lots of free peasant kills here. This should be a level 5 Death Knight. And the Lich is still level 1, so it means he's easy pickings, despite coils to save the Lich. If there's enough focus from Fire Lord, then he could easily pick off the Lich. And he might want to focus on doing that, because the Lich is carrying the Orb of Corruption. He's got some expensive items there, so if you're going for the Lich, it's worthwhile investment, because you're going to pick off a hero unit, and you're also going to get rid of all those potential items that could be damaging you. But it does look like Anubis is getting back here. He doesn't save those two fiends. Ooh, too late. Yes, you need to uproot or unburrow your fiends as soon <laughs> as you are about to teleport out, because otherwise they don't come with you. And we've got the tanks. Look how much punishment they can take. They're not even upgraded on the armor, and they just take so much punishment. Easily the best unit here first is undead. And we've got 72 food, and Fire Lord is clearly aiming for more. First is 60 out of 80, but Anubis is working on the Frostworms. The Frostworms are pretty damn good. They're not too bad versus tanks in a 1 versus 1 situation. In a team game, it's a bit more tricky, but on a 1 versus 1, as long as the human player doesn't have too many tanks, you can still sort of use your army to pick off the tanks and put them into awkward positions and fly over trees, etc., etc. Avoid them. Go for heroes. 
But there are a bunch of rifles as well to help versus the Frostworm. But I would like to see something more appropriate. Just a couple of Dragonhawks would be enough to really screw over those um, Frostworms. Plus it would help versus the Ziggurats. But it's quite a complex way to play. I mean, it's not super complex, but it's like the next level where you actually have to put a lot of effort in. And it's something that a lot of people wouldn't probably bother to do because it's just that bit of extra effort. I think siege engines are going to be enough, to be quite frank with you. You don't really need the cloud to get rid of towers because the siege engines are doing a pretty good job of that. Third hero, now that's a bit more effort. Triple hero is definitely a bit more awkward because I'm someone that likes to put my heroes on the 1, 2, 3 hotkeys rather than the F1s. And here we've got Anubis teleporting back in to try and defend. He's got the advantage of shock and surprise, but unfortunately those riflemen have the advantage of a brilliant position to just basically focus all of those Frostworms within range. So we've got two Frostworms down and Anubis is pretty much out of this. He's got no more spare gold really. And ironically he's got more wood than gold this time round. He's lost almost everything. Death Knight is nowhere near to level 6. He managed to save the Lich who's being somewhat blocked by two siege engines there. And Philor can pretty much just sit back, relax and auto attack his way to victory right now. Particularly with tanks. That would be a good way to do it. Even quicker. What will happen to this fiend? I hear you ask. What will happen to the fiend? I want to see boots of speed on that mountain king. He must have it because he's moving pretty fast. He's got rings of protection, orb of darkness, so skeleton minions, board shredder, and an empty gold mine. But that doesn't matter because apparently Fire Lord is working on another expansion down here, which of course Anubis has almost no answer to whatsoever. In fact, he's going to struggle just to keep his own base alive because he's now lost his main gold mine and has no expansion. The double boneyard does not serve you now. He's moving off to try and get himself another expansion, but he doesn't realize that he's basically about 40 food, if not 50 food, behind his opponent. So, yeah. Clutching at straws is what I would say. And this is rough because of the two siege engines. If it wasn't the siege engines, this is bad, don't get me wrong. But the two extra siege engines just really ramp up the speed of the siege versus that base. And, well, now it's four. So I don't fancy Anubis' chances at this point. I would say that this is a lovely little arc here with the Illyria's beautiful flute playing in the background. Magic music. Oh, imagine if that Archmage got level six as well teleport but to where the only real place he could teleport to is probably down here Anubis really does need to leave though now so what can you say what is there really left to say at this point he's got a much weaker army his heroes are very low on mana he definitely didn't want to have to use a Nova on that because now he's got no mana <laughs> But having said that, it's kind of irrelevant at this point because even if he had full mana, he's still lost. He's not in a position to be able to sort of dance around picking units off. Unless he had like, you know, level 6 or 7 Death Knight and, you know, 5 Lich, then maybe he can dance around and just pick off the human units and keep doing that. I don't think Fire Lord should have teleported there because I guess he's getting bored and wants some actual real action, but yeah, he needs to end. It is over. Definitely. There's no way in a billion years Anubis can come back. This is just basically scratching for time. Basically wasting time. He knows he can't come back. He must have some sort of logical reasoning to understand that there is no way you can I'll deal with this human army attack. in any way, shape or form with what you currently have. Undead Imbalance will not carry you that far. Two priests no longer on the follow key, which is what you always do. You follow them on your heroes, and then when you teleport, you forget that they need, you need to reassign the follow. And then they basically go AFK, and then you realize, and you send them off to your army, and then they get caught by a frostworm and a couple of heroes. This Kappa word is being used far too often. <laughs> Just for the sake of it. Oh, the siege engines are going to work. Acolyte's going down. There really isn't anything else left unless Anubis sneaks off an acolyte to build another necropolis elsewhere. Otherwise I don't fancy his chances. Yeah, this looks bad. For you. 
Oh my. And now he's repairing. This is as bad as Albert this is. No manners whatsoever. See you later. Game over! There is the victory for Fire Lord and the defeat for Anubis. Well, there it is. Five, five and two. Yeah, that's pretty nasty to be honest. And the Mountain King can just solo that, to be honest. Okay, well, if you enjoyed this, then thumbs up the video, and subscribe, like, and comment, and I'll see you later. Take care.